Hey everybody, it's Doug here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a new uh, playthrough. This one is going to be of Tainted Grail, The Fall of Avalon. Now, in this particular episode, you probably have seen this uh, many times. This is the tutorial only. And for the moment, I'm just going to do the tutorial because uh, I may be doing something special with this game shortly that's not related to the tutorial. But I can do the tutorial, knock that out with you guys, and go on to something uh, go on to something more with this shortly. Maybe something in between the tutorial and uh, a gameplay through of this. We'll see. But what I wanted to tell you is that I have set up for the tutorial of this. And I just want to say I got some new something new from somebody. It was really awesome. You can see these two bowls here. And I'm sure you've seen these before. They're really neat. But a, a uh, co-worker of mine uh, watched my channel and realized that I've been using things like this Spongebob cup and these little bowls and thought very thoughtfully got me a pack of those. So that's really cool. Anyway, they're color-coded, so i got all the red ones in here, all the purple ones in here. That's pretty much all we need. There's another little token we might need, but in the tutorial, it's very, very scripted. It's, we're going to do a very specific thing. As part of that, we have set up a character. In the tutorial, you play specifically Bior. Uh, Bior has a couple abilities that really aren't going to take. This one won't take uh, effect at all during the tutorial. This Festering Wound will. It says lose one for every... Oh, i got to mark two more things on his board. This and this, and we'll go over what that means in a minute. Okay. Um, we got this Festering Wound. If we become exhausted, which means we, our energy goes down to there or lower, then we start to suffer the wounds, which is bad because wounds are bad. And this is our wound tracker. You can see we actually have nine wounds. We're pretty healthy. He's a pretty buff buffed out character. This is a combat deck and this is a diplomacy deck. Each character will have these. In the tutorial these are scripted so this is set up in a very specific manner. So is this because we're going to be following a very specific path. Now Bior uh, also has on this side you can see that you put the placeholder here but it's the this board is mapped to his colors. You can see it tells us on this side how we're going to set him up with his starting attributes. So you can see we have two in aggression, one in courage, one in um, in practicality, none in spirituality. He's not spiritual duties of like a blacksmith. Ca one in caution and none in empathy. He's not empathetic. He also starts with three food and one wealth, and he you play with this side down, which is what it says because you put that into that spot, and that gives you your character. And you can see I have these these things set up on the board. Now, there's two more things that we set up. We set up our energy level, which starts at 6 for him, and our terror level, which starts at 0. And the the way the um, tutorial is, is set up, it's very, very scripted. So I'm basically covering with things with you that I read in detail to get this set up. The other thing that the tutorial asked us to, asked us to do, I'm going to move these aside for now. I don't want to spoil anything. Now, by the way, this will be spoiler filled for the tutorial but the tutorial does not spoil the main game so that's pretty cool it's set it's separate from the main game anyway we have uh, my my sun drop miniatures painted miniatures here this is bior right here he's pretty cool he's starting on the um uh the in the village of Con kunact i think it's conact or kunact and then we have our men here now the men here has a dial in it and the dial is already set to eight that's where it starts as we start our, our game and one thing I, a lot of people have said is you almost immediately move that dial and they're like why'd you do that why don't you start at seven well i'm going to tell you why because it's good to get the routine of doing the routine <laughs> and I'll, I'll tell you a, a, an example of when that where that didn't work one of my favorite games darkest night has a mechanic where uh you every round a player draws a uh a an event card but in, in the very first turn you don't and for some reason, I've seen this happen over and over again, that fact that you don't do that in the first turn throws everybody off and everybody forgets to draw their event card over and over again. Got to backtrack. Anyway, so I'm glad they did it that way. That's part of the rules. You'll see that when we get started. Um, so that's the men here. Now, the men here lights our way across the world and also protects this village. We'll talk about the village in a moment. You can see that there's four exposed locations. These are within the light of the men here. The men here also would shed light on these four locations too because it's everything that's adjacent orthogonally and diagonally to the men here but uh once you get outside you can't go any farther outside that because there's this thing called the weird 
I think it's the weird or weirdness that is enshrouding the area around it in a terrible like fog and you can't go there without uh, and uncovering another men here right uh, so that's one of the things you have to do in Tainted Grail. There are more than one. I think there's three in the box. There's quite a, there's a whole other box of monsters. It's just crazy stuff. And you can see that they're just beautifully detailed. So we do have our, our basic uh, setup here for the... the um, I'm going to move the miniatures off for just a moment so I can show you the basic setup of cards. And these cards represent the landscape of the area we're starting in. And the, we're going to start in the village of Kunact. And I'm going to read about that, but I'm just going to talk about the cards for a minute so you understand them. And you may have seen this in other tutorials. If you have, then I'm sorry you're sitting through it again. Maybe you need a refresher. Anyway, you can see that there's these numbers. These correspond to the cards that would be pointing out the numbered cards and what they'd be when you draw them or move into that space. So we have card 103 over here, card 102, the center card 101. The other cards will point back to this one. You'll see that too. Now, it tells you the card number here. It also tells you that this is Kunak Farmhold. It has a couple. Of, it has different symbols here. These symbols are on a card, so you don't ever have to remember them. They're on a icon card, which is pretty handy dandy. But just to give you an idea, this one here represents dreams. So if there is this icon here, it means when you sleep, you will have a dream or a nightmare potentially. Uh, this means this is a little village symbol. It's green, meaning it's a friendly village. We can go there and we're happy as clams. And this little purple one means that there is a uh, men here, which we already know that's there. There's a beautiful artwork of the surrounding countryside leading into the ruined village of Kunat. And then it says, for and there's a special ability. Now, this won't come into play in the tutorial because we're going to do some special stuff, right? But under normal circumstances, you would spend one energy and you get to do chores for the townsfolk, and you gain one reputation per day, you do that. Then there's a little flavor text. It's history, as vast as its graveyard, its future as empty as its homes. That's not good, right? That sounds really sad. Anyway, there's stuff that goes on in the back here, but we're not, again, in the tutorial, I don't think we're going to use this. So, we're going to put that back. But that is that card. We're going to go over the rest, too. So the other points we can immediately travel to, we'll start with, I guess, 102. It's called the Hunter's Grove. And again, in this scripted event, we will have these back again, but you can see you can dream there, right? It's got the number. It tells you that 113 will be above here, but we're nowhere near ex exposing that. we got 106 and 107, which we do have set aside for this tutorial, which means we're going to use those. And we can spend two energy here to gather food. And it says gain two food, draw one green encounter. We'll talk about encounters in a minute. It says, in ages past, only the druids were allowed into the grove for good reason that is now forgotten. So, that you, I think you get the idea. And, it, of course, the all the scenery matches, right? It flows through, like, you notice here in Kunacht, you see the top of the sword hilt for these giant swords down in the forgotten, the forlorn swords. I think we'll leave the rest for, some, for discovery as we play through, and that's a pretty cool idea. Now, I did mention encounters. So for this tutorial, let's put these guys back so we have the cool atmosphere of them being in the village. All right, let's go talk about these four tutorial cards over here. These are your first encounters. Now, you notice there's only four. Now, normally there'd be four big decks, and they'd be structured in such a way for the scenario of the current part of the campaign that we're on. Uh, we're also going to be not playing with a bunch of encounters that are random that we could have every, every turn that could set some... Uh, uh, side quest for us, all kinds of cool stuff. This is an adventure game, and it can be played with up to four players. But, also, well, by the way, I didn't say this. It's by Awakened Realms. You can look at that. It's, I mean, it's just a super cool game. I, this is one probably, I'm so looking forward to playing this game in detail. It's just awesome. Anyway, you can see I have a green, a white, a blue, and a, and a, a purple encounter. They represent different types of encounters on the board. Um, and we'll go over that uh, in a moment. Let me see. I, think I might, might go over it now. I don't know. We shall see. Uh, it's very specific, though. And, like, for example, when, when we have... We're going to have... Again, this is a very scripted event. So the green ones, you know, those are like, you know, wild animals. Like, you might run into a bear or a wolf or something like that. Um, and they usually drop... Like, when you, they usually give you food or something that, uh, as a result, it could be just something you hunt. I don't know. Uh, the gray ones, the, those ones are a little different. They're, they uh, are like brigands and people. There are encounters you can have with other people. Could be a, a diplomacy encounter. Could be a combat encounter. I don't know. It could be both. I don't know enough about the game to know if that happens. Um, they, they usually drop things like wealth. And then you have uh, the blue ones. They're non-combat stuff. Things that can that you can deal with that are, are not go, probably not going to be dealt with these 
the two decks of cards that we have for for fighting and diplomacy, other stuff, and then the real bad ones, the big ones, the big bad guys are the purple cards, and we have one of those. So we have one of each right now for this tutorial, and uh, the tutorial again, the tutorial is going to flow in a very certain, uh, very specific way. It's also going to use a part of the book that is different, the big storybook. So. This is the storybook. You see it's really hefty, but the very first part of it is the tutorial. Um, and that's what we're going to use. Uh, it's called the, this is the journal, the exploration journal. It tells you how to use it. Pretty cool. But we're going to use the tutorial uh, section of it, which is a uh, special um, section of the book. i got to have to find it, but you get the idea. We're not going to be using the normal section of the book, so I'm going to have to find the tutorial part there it is it's in the back yeah so anyway there's a, a section specifically for it that we're going to be using to explore and read from and i'll get i have that ready to go okay but basically with all that set up there's a couple of things that you have you have a turn order card which we'll go through in detail as we play you have a combat overview card which we will go through in detail when we have combat and a diplomacy overview on that side and then you have an icon glossary that shows you all the different icons that are in the game and event traits, things that happen during events. Pretty cool. So the one thing I'll say is I, I, I love those cards, those types of cards. I don't know why more games that have like lots of icons and that don't do that. They just assume you're going to get used to knowing them. You're going to play it enough. I like the fact that this, this game took the care to have those cards available. But we're ready to start the actual playthrough. I've explained enough to you to get started. There's one more thing that comes in there. It says, open and play. This is from the open and play deck that contained not these cards, but the rest of the cards for this setup. And it says, do not shuffle this into the card deck. And it, later on, it becomes part of our saved encounters. So we can segment them in the box so we know what we are doing next. But how do we start? Well, we did the open and play stuff. We got everything set up. I've just kind of covered that with you. It is set up and ready to go. We just need to read the story that gets kicks us off. And then we're going to see what happens with Bior's adventure in the first adventure of uh, Tainted Grail. Now, I doubt it's going to be really fun because this is kind of a dark world. And these are not the heroes. These are the secondary guys, the guys that were left behind. So they have to deal with stuff. So we'll see how this plays out. Again, before we get started, I want to say do not take this tutorial as indicative of the entire game. In fact, don't think that you cannot read the rules after you play the tutorial. You absolutely must read the rules, especially on, on combat. Everything. So I would just say, this is great. It gives you a good foundation to then go really dive into the rules. But uh, like I said, I read the encounter section already, so I, or, or the uh, combat section already, so I had a good idea. This does not replace the rules. Uh, so when you get into the, the main game with the additional hundreds and hundreds of cards and components, uh, you're going to need to do that. Okay, anyway, this is how we begin. They still call this place a farmhold. Even though barren fields provide little food, and crumbling walls offer no protection. The last relic of the glory days of Kunacht is its men here, always adorned with red ribbons lit by candles and with a daily offering at its gnarled feet. As long as the men here repels the weirdness, the town folk are ready to endure anything. But last night, the weirdness came closer than ever before. A man was lost following the call of his future self. A house on the outskirts of town has turned inside out, its furniture growing into a bloated outer shell, like barnacles on the side of a boat. For many hours, the air tasted of metal and sour milk. That's gross. Okay. Now, people say, as you say, your guardian men here is failing, like many others all over the land. For you, the night was even worse. The festering wound in your side throbbed as if something tried to tear itself free and join the rolling clouds of weird outside of the town. In the morning, a boy comes running to your shack. Master Aphir needs to see you. Move, you big oaf. Big goof, sorry. Big goof. Well, the little kid calls a big guy like this a big goof. He better run. You chase the brat, there you go, away with a well-aimed throw of a boot, and immediately start to regret it as the boot lands deep in a puddle outside your door. That's the beginning, guys. So here's where we start. Bior is in the village. Now, um, we're going to skip now because all, the first part of this is all about the setup. And then you go to part one, start of the day. That's actually, so just to give you an idea how this works, it tells you all about the setup that I already discussed with you and how we got this thing ready to go for the, the 
tutorial. And then we're going to start here with part one, start of the day. Now, I don't know if I'm going to read that all to you. I think I don't need to. I think we'll just start. I'll just read it as we go through. So it says, it's now dawn. Bior is ready to start his journey. Perform your first start of the day routine following the order listed on the green help card. So we're going to do that. Okay. That says the card at first asks you to remove uh, the ex expired men here's and locations outside of the men here range. The only men here on the map has a dial. It's not expired, and all revealed locations are adjacent to the men here. You don't discard them. Now reduce the men here dial by one. It should show a number of seven. The help card also mentions time tokens, but they are n there are none in play now, so we don't have to worry about time tokens. There aren't going to be any in play. In a standard game, you would now reveal an event card, but this tutorial has its own event card printed below. We'll look at that in a minute because we want to make sure we're following the steps. So let's take a look at the green card. Remove expired men here and discard locations outside. We don't have to worry about that. Our men here still kick in, thank God. All time on the men here, reduce all time on the men here dials. Remove time tokens. Then we're going to reveal the next event card. So first thing we have to do is take our men here. And as I told you, we have him on eight right now, so he's just going to go to seven. And uh, like I said, now normally people say, why don't you just start on seven and start out with one? Because I think it's a good idea to keep following the routine. And I agree with that philosophy, so I'm glad they did it that way. Okay, but now we're going to look at our first encounter. Okay. And it says, quest one. That means it costs uh, one energy, I believe. Is that right? I believe so. I don't know what that means. No, it just means quest. Speak to the, the Kunak blacksmith Airfear. Hint, to meet Airfear, you have to explore the Kunak farmhold location. So this is going to replace the normal uh, um, exploration. There are no guardians to move, and you don't have any items, so you may skip the remaining start of the day step. So we're going to stop there and go to our first exploration. So we're going to start, the, we're going to skip the rest of the start of the day stuff. Then we're going to go during the day. Until everyone runs out of energy or passes, players will perform one action in any order. So that's what we're doing now. And our first action is going to be to explore. Let's take a look at that. We're going to read, continue to read through this tutorial. After start of the day, characters may perform actions. Each action in Tainted Grail is marked with a special icon that also shows its cost. That's that one right there. You saw that on the Kunek card. It says you can explore it for one. As the first action, Bior should visit Airfear. To do so, explore the Kunak farmhold location. To initiate this action, pay one energy. Move the marker on your energy track one slot lower. Let's do that. So we go down from six to five on the energy because we're getting up and we've got our boots out of the mud and we're going off to talk to Airfear, who is clearly all the way across the village because it's costing us energy to get there. Okay. In a standard game, exploration would direct you to text on the other side of the location card, but this tutorial won't spoil any stories from the campaign. Instead, go to the tutorial exploration journal printed on the back page of the exploration journal book. There, find the appropriate section 101, Kunak Farmhold, and start reading. So we have we are still advent, we're still venturing, we're exploring in the Kunak Farmhold, and we're going to have a story event there. Now you note that it said that you can flip the, you know, on a normal game you can flip the card over, there's all the stuff in the back of the card, and I showed you that. All those things are also in this book, so if you have miniatures on that card and everything, you don't want to flip it over, you don't have to, which is cool. Another good feature they took they took into consideration, you may not be interested in moving the, all the miniatures on and off all the time. Anyway, this is 101, Kunak Farmhold. Exploration journal entries for, the most, for most locations in Tainted Grail start with an introduction that leads to your decisions. Read the location's introduction first. Now we know that this is when we we used our exploration energy, this at least this point, to uh, go talk to Airfear. A deep feeling of loss pervades Kunacht. From dilapidated farms to the sunken eyes of those who remain in town, the men here in the market is nearly extinguished. Still, this place is the only home you have ever, you ever knew. Now you're ready to choose what to do in this location. Below are two options redirecting you to different verses paragraphs. Each has a requirement. The first time you come here, you are only able to choose the first option because the second one requires a specific part of the status story trigger marked on your tutorial save sheet. I'll, I'll deal with that later. It basically goes only two boxes on it. We know there's one and two, and you'll see what it is here. I don't need to get the sheet out to show you that. 
um, you're only able to choose one option because the section option requires a specific part of, this, of a status. Story trigger marked on your tutorial. Okay, If you are here for the second time, you should already have part two of the required status. So only the second option is accessible to you. Make your choice. Speak with your master. Only if you don't have the part of su the surprising errand status. Go to verse one. I'm going to show you something real quick. This is a save sheet. And as you can see, there's all kinds of statuses, many, many statuses. You can pause and look at this. I'm not going to go over it too much. And this also helps you save your game. It shows you what stuff your characters have, all the things that are going on. It's pretty cool. I like it. We're going to put that aside for now. We don't need it. But I did want to show you that because we would be marking, uh, we would be looking at that to see how we handle things later on in the game. But we know that we do not have part, any part of the surprising errand status. So we're going to go to verse 1. The other one is complete your mission requires part two of the surprising air status, which we don't have. So we go to there. It says, Air Fear is up earlier than usual. As you enter, he hides a large pack behind a curtain and turns to you with a wide smile. You here, lad? Good. Hope you're ready to stretch your legs a bit. I hear a star fell... <laughs> Sorry. I hear a star fell, fell near whitening. Whitening, I guess. And a local tanner picked it up. It's a solid ingot, large as your dingy head. I'd rather not have it fall into the hands of some other smith. You nod. Falling stars are a bad omen for most simple folks, but they are always excite they always excite blacksmiths and armorers. After all, the legendary Excalibur was forged from once one of these cold shards of, of distant skies. Soon you depart, walking down the sloping fields toward the miscovered forest with some rations, your trusty hammer and a purse of silver Elphir gave you. Before stepping into the shadow of the trees, you take one last look back at the ancient statue towering above the shacks and houses. How much longer can this tired old thing protect Kunacht? Gain part one of the surprising errand status and gain one wealth. Your exploration ends. Now, when it says exploration ends, that's what it means. You don't read anymore, you stop, that's it. You continue on. Now we know that we have to do something else. So we're gonna take a look at that in just a minute. So we gained one wealth from the pouch of money that uh, was given to us by our our master, blacksmith master. It gives us two wealth, and that's basically how you mark it. You just throw a cube in there. And then I didn't really have one, and I don't want to ruin, I don't know, I couldn't find one in the print either, but I'm sure there's one out there. I just did a little save sheet for myself. So we got Surprising Aaron 1 checked off. Okay, and let's go back to the book now. You have gained your first story-related status. Mark it on your tutorial save sheet or write it down on a piece of paper. That's what we did. Bjor also gains one wealth, which we did. Take one of your universal marker and place it on the wealth slot of Bjor's tray. We did that. After the exploration ends, you should return to the game. Go to Part 3, First Travel. Okay, let's take a look at Part 3, First Travel. Like I said, this is heavily scripted to teach you the game mechanics, so don't expect this to go off the rails and let me explore wherever I want. Anyway, your, ex your exploration is now finished, and you have a new task. It's time to start moving Bjor toward his destination, the cursed farmhold known as the Whitening. As you know from the Exploration Journal, the Whitening is northeast of your village. Did it say that? I think it did. Anyway, um, to plan the journey, let's study all revealed locations. To the east is the Charred Conclave, a dangerous place that will trigger an automatic encounter as soon as Bjor enters it, if the rules are marked with a lightning icon, which it is. Okay. To the north is a Hunter's Grove, a place where Bjor can gather some food. This looks like this looks better, doesn't it? That means that's where we're going. Perform the travel action, pay one energy, and move Bjor to Hunter's Grove 102, 102. As you arrive there, check if there are any locations connected to the Hunter's Grove that you should reveal. You may reveal those you may reveal only you may reveal any location that are connected to your current location with a direction key uh, the numbers of on the edge of the card for more information see for more information see page 10 of the rule book I'm unable to read right now or speak I don't know which um, in range of an active men here they are adjacent either in a straight line or diagonally to a location with a men here model in this case you should attach location 106 four dweller mounds, and 107, the whitening, to the side of the Hunter's Grove. So let's go do that part, and we'll continue on. So we're going to move. I'm going to take the men here off the board just so you see what we're doing. He is going to move north, which is going to cost us an energy. Remember, we're still in our, our actions phase where we're doing our actions. So we're down to four energy. We've gone up to the Hunter's Grove. 
Then we get to place two new locations. So we're going to place the whitening, which you know we just talked about. It goes to this side. And that's where we're trying to get to because the farmer there has our uh, star metal that fell from the sky. You can see that we're going to have a dream there. It is a village, but it's not a friendly one. That's why it's not green. And uh, it shows a men here. There. I think for the tutorial, I don't think we do that. I'm not sure anyway. It says draw a blue encounter when you enter this location. So we're going to have an encounter as soon as we get there. Uh, but we're not there yet. Okay. And then it says, um, maybe that's not the men here icon. Maybe it, No, that's, what, that's the men here icon. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. And it says the four dweller mounds. Um, has the men here icon as well. It says uh, it would treasure hunt. We can do these things there. We'll, we'll deal with those as we cross them. But for now, we're just going to place them on the board like so because we have moved up there and we get to see these two new locations because they're still within the radius of the men here that's on our space. And that's basically it. He moved up there. We're going to continue on with our, our, for our travels. Okay, now after revealing those, it says... Um, do not attach locations 113 to the top of the Hunter's Grove as it would be too far from your men here. Well, we're not going to do that anyway. And the main reason is because we were told not to even take that card out. So we know better. Okay, part four. First location action. Bjor's new location has an action. Gather food. Food is an important resource that you consume at the end of each day. So gathering more won't hurt. To activate the location's action, pay two energy. Bjor gains two food. Take two markers, place them in the food slot of your character tray. The action also says, asks you to draw one green encounter. So when you get food, you draw a green encounter. To take the green encounter card you've played near the map during this step. Okay, take it. Sorry, not to take it. Place it face up so that you have plenty of free space to the right of the encounter card. Well, we're going to do that right now. This is going to be fun. Our first encounter, but first, we are going to gain our two food. We're food heavy. Good job, Bior. And that cost us two energy. So we're now down to two. That's pretty bad. Uh, we definitely are not going to be able to do much after that. But like it says in, Hunt, in Hunter's Grove, we'll take a look at that card just a little bit more. It says for two energy, gather food, gain two food, draw one green encounter. So we're going to have to have a green encounter. Now you know that those are typically animals and stuff, right? So let's uh, get that card out and we're going to continue with our um, encounter of the green card. That's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to get to do a combat encounter, I believe. So here is our green encounter card. It says your first encounter. Boom! What do we got? Now, one of the neat things about these first encounters, and it recommends that when you play your first full game that you put these on top, because the first thing you fight is going to give you some pointers. So we're going to fight a mist-shaped vermin. It says four. That's the encounter value. You may, you need this many red cubes to win. Cubes re equal damage. Attribute keys. Place the first card you play here. So we're going to be lining up attribute keys, and you'll see how that works as we go. Combat pool. On this side, we're going to put the cubes that we've gathered in combat. And it says, um, you can't call yourself a true adventurer until you've killed one of these. So until we've killed a misshaped uh, vermin, we can't call ourselves an adventurer. Um, and then if we get to its turn, it's going to follow this combat table. The combat table number of... of the number of cubes determines the enemy's attack, so the more we damage it, the more it's going to do. Okay, um, if we don't attack it, I believe, it, the opportunity is, is for it to run away, and we would the loot for this is one food. Now, we're going to be playing a very specific encounter, so I'm not too worried about it running away. We'll see how this plays out. So, we're going to our first combat turn. Now, here's the combat card. We're just going to put it right... Let's see if we can get out everything. We'll probably have to back out just a little bit, but give you an idea. Oh, sorry, wrong one. This is the combat one. Okay. It says, first combat. Read the combat encounter card carefully. To win, you need to gather a number of markers in the combat pool equal to, the higher, equal to or higher than the encounter value. To gain these markers, you play combat cards from your hand. Prepare two uh, prepare to help cards. Prepare two help cards. One with the combat overview and one with the combat and diplomacy icons. Now let's go through the, your first combat step by step following the combat rules overview help card. Okay. And these are the combat icons that they're talking about right here on this card. If you can see, so we'll just keep that handy as well. It says, uh, remember, if you want to know more, you can find the detailed descriptions of all cards and icons in the combat sections, page 14 of the rulebook. Okay, we're going to draw three cards from our combat deck. Let's do that. 
Remember in the tutorial we are not to shuffle this, so we're just going to put it right here so we can see everything in the action. We're going to draw one, two, and three. First off, the artwork is stunning on these cards. I love it. Just love it. Okay, so these are three cards. It says, from your combat deck, remember not to shuffle. It says if you did, there the cards are numbered. You can see the numbers right here, so you can reorder them back up if you need to. See, that says one of 25. Um, okay. You don't have to check the encounter traits. It has none, and you don't need to pick an active character. You're alone, so Bjorg could be active. You can also ignore delayed ability steps. There aren't any abilities in play yet. Okay, great. So that what we're talking about there is the combat overview. It says, draw three cards from the combat deck, four characters, two cards, check the enemy traits. So I said, you don't have to do that. Let me go to pick active character. We don't have to do that. That's what it tells us. And it says character activation, delayed abilities. We don't have to do that. So we're moving right on to play play cards because we're not in the main game. So we're just doing the tutorial, right? So um, it says, time to fight. Play the attack card. Attach it to the right edge of the encounter card as seen above. This causes both halves uh, aggression um, of the aggression key and the bottom golden key to join. Let's take a look at that. So this is the attack card right here. You can see the icon, so we're going to do this, right? We're going to line this bad boy up right here. That's how that works. You can see that these are connected. There's two aggression markers here. We have two aggressions, so we're in good shape there. And on the first card, as I understand it, as long as you can line them up, it doesn't have to exactly, like if you don't have two, you can still do that. I'll have to read that further, but I believe that's the case. Um, so this shows you that if we line up here, if we match, we gain one red cube. But we're not, we're not, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. We've lined it up. You see that the top one matches and the bottom one matches. So, we're going to continue on. You may only connect keys with an attribute icon if you have the attribute. Bjor has two uh, aggression on his character trace, so the, the aggression key connects and grants its bonus. Place one red cube in your combat pool. So, because we, we successfully did that, we hit the vermin for one red combat cube. We beat it. We are attacking him. We're beating him down, right? The golden bottom key always connects and has no requirement. Place one more red cube in your combat pool. So, as you can see, this one says if we connect these, we get one more combat pool. Now, that means he has two right now. So, we'll see how this plays out, right? Now, it has an icon on it. There's all kinds of icons. It means damage. So that means damage, 0 to 2 damage, and, zero, and 3 will lose a hit. We'll see how that goes, or lose a cube. Uh, but I don't think we're going to have to do that. The first ability causes all enemy attacks to deal one more damage. The second ability instructs you to place a time marker on the attack card. Is that what it tells me to do? Oh, right here, on his card. Yeah, so, um, and it, it gives us the ability to draw a card for a time marker. The ability itself will be resolved during the next delayed ability step unless you cover it up with another card first. Each turn you may play only one card plus as many additional cards as you can connect using their skill bonuses icons. Um, this means that any further cards you play this turn would require you to connect this the bonus. So that means you can see that there's additional connections here so I'd have to connect those as well and to cover up that one thing where we, the, he would attack us back for a damage. Okay. Play Ignore Pain. Okay, well, let's take a look at Ignore Pain. Here's an Ignore Pain. You can see that uh, it does have this connection. It also has two um, Courage, which I, do. I think we only have one, and it has uh, this one, this magic one, which we would require magic to do, but it says to play it. So it says, Ignore Pain Plane has two other keys. The blue magic key requires one magic to be connected. You do not have any magic at the moment. We, you can't connect it. The free key right here uh, it says the free key contains a bonus icon. Um, uh, it says draw one card. So we're, how this is played, we're going to play this over that so the keys all line up. Now that negates the ability of the attack card underneath, right? But we can always connect these free ones. And what it says is that's going to ignore pain also contains a text ability just like the attack ability. Uh, well, first off, um, the free key contains a plus bonus icon, so draw one card. Okay, so we're going to get to draw another card. We drew Powerful Blow. That looks pretty nasty. Looks like we can kill him with that pretty quickly, right? Um, ignore, ignore Pain also con contains a text ability, just like Attack's ability. So remember the Attack card had a, an ability on it as well. It triggers during the enemy attack step. 
okay, which is not happening yet. But if, if it were, just to show you this, the enemy attack step has that little um, skull icon right there. Okay, you have two cards left in your hand, but let's not cover the ignore pain card for now. Proceed to the next step phase. Okay, so we're in our combat overview. We played cards, and now we're going to go on to the next step. Um, if you don't play any cards, resolve the opportunity attack listed. We did play cards, so we did all this. We did all this stuff right here, which is uh, play cards and receive opportunity attacks. Play any one combat card from your hand. Play any number of additional cards. Each additional card must connect. So you can the first card you can play any card you want, but the next group of cards have to connect to something, right? And we did. We connected to the free skill there. Okay, after that, perform a victory check. Well, we didn't kill it yet, so we can continue on. If you didn't play any cards, we, we would have we would trigger that ability and we'd run away, but we didn't do that, right? So a quick victory check shows that Bjor didn't win yet. He has two markers in the combat pool requires four. It's time for the enemy to attack. In Tainted Grail, each enemy has many different moves depending on the value of the combat pool. Bjor currently has two markers in the combat pool. Check the combat table. The attack for zero to two markers deals one damage. Move Bjor's health track one slot down. That's not all. Bjor ignores pain. Bjor's ignore pain card modifies the enemy attack and instructs you to add a marker for every point of damage received from the attack as you can uh, so you can add one marker to your combat pool okay so we received the attack but let's take a look at that so this says attack gain one uh, red cube for every point of com of damage received that's what it's talking about but first off we have to take the damage from the, the enemy what that means is this thing goes down here and we are now at eight and you can see that it also reduces the maximum we can get our abilities up to so as we take damage we are, it lowers our ability energy to gain energy. It lowers our threshold of terror and all oh, health. So that's bad. Then we trigger this ability. It says uh, gain one red cube for every point of uh, one combat cube for every point of damage received. We received one. So we now have three damage on this bad guy right here. Okay, we've done that. During the end turn, you must discard until you have three cards in your hand. You only have two cards in hand, so you don't. So this does not apply to you. Now draw one combat card. So we came to the end of that fight round. We're going to go into another one. We only have two cards, so we get to draw a third one. This one is called Battle Cry. Okay, so we're about to head into our second battle turn, and uh, we're going to follow the scripted event on that too. Remember, this is to teach you, and I'm teaching you the event as well as we play it out. But... You can see that the combat is really unique and different. I do like it. I think once you understand it, it's not that complicated. You have to match symbols and then follow the order, the order of play. The next turn begins. You could finish this battle quickly by playing Powerful Blow. Well, we took a look at that. Powerful Blow, it's basically going to, um, for our aggression, it's going to do two cubes. We could kill them right away. Um, and it also has some other abilities on it. But uh, it costs us energy to do that. I'm not sure that we want to do that. In fact, I think it's going to instruct us not to. But that would mean losing energy. As stated on the card, let's start with Battle Cry instead. Its free key contains a card bonus, which means you draw one more card. Okay, that's fine. So we're going to take this new card that we got, Battle Cry, and we're going to play it right here. Now, you see the free key. Now, this is interesting because, see, this one has two, I think we would have had to connect with both to get that card. I'm pretty sure we would have. That's why the only thing we can do is that one. So we get to draw another card. All right. We, we got throw. Gosh, I just love the artwork on this. Okay. There's our cards. We did that. Let's continue on. Okay. Um, you have now drawn the perfect card to end the encounter. Play the throw card. It has a ability icon in its aggression key. Additionally, its free key gives you uh, one more cube. So we're going to do that. We're going to play. So we, we didn't play Powerful Blow. We played Throw. So Throw is going to get played right here. That's going to prevent that from happening, which is okay. We don't care about that because we're going to deal him enough damage. Uh, so as you can see, we have uh, um, enough damage to kill this guy. And it says flip over one weapon or so. We don't, we're not going to do that because that means we threw the weapon and damaged it. But we did enough damage to kill it. So as it says, its free key gives you one. So you were up to four markers. Okay. Perform a victory check. There are four markers in the combat pool, which means you have one. The loot is one food. Place one marker 
in food in the food section of Bior's character tray. So we're going to take a marker and we're going to place it right there. He's full on food. He's full up. He's just his belly's fed and all that stuff. That's good. And then it says uh, now put the defeated encounter card at the bottom of the deck. Well, we know we don't really have a deck, so we're going to take this uh, vermin right and just place him right back here. I don't know if we're going to encounter him again or not, but we'll see. Okay, return all played played drawn cards to or discarded cards to your combat deck and shuffle the deck. So now we're going to shuffle this deck, right? So we have a whole bunch of cards we played here. There they all are. So we're going to put this in here and we're going to shuffle the combat deck. And that's what it says to do, so I'm going to do it, even though we know we can reorder them if we need to. So I'm giving this a quick shuffle just to make sure we have it down. I'll put the, the card, the deck back. We are done. Put our combat overview back. I think you got it. Tell me if you didn't, if I didn't explain it well. Okay. If you want to, you may play. Oh, you may play this encounter again, ignoring any of the um, um, health and um, energy losses to familiarize yourself with its combat mechanics. We're good. If you are not sure about any of the rules, uh, check pages, rule books, pages fourteen through seventeen. That's the combat check. Peace. Okay. So now, though, we're going to go to a new part of the day. So we, we came into Hunter's Grove and we decided to gather some food. In doing so, we ended up having to fight the vermin, the, the twisted vermin. And we killed it, gaining some more food. So we're, we're, quite, we're doing quite well on food. We have six food cubes. That's very helpful to us, though we did take a little damage doing it. Just a flesh wound, Vior says, as he uh, takes the damage. Yeah, okay. I'll make sure I'm getting the glare off of here. Well, that's okay for now. All right, ending the day. Vior is wounded and only has two energy left. If you look at the energy track slots, marked uh, as one through one, th one and zero are red and have an exhausted sign. For now, you don't want Bjor to become exhausted, so you should rest. Make a pass action. Okay, that's what we'll do. This will end your in-game day. Okay, so the first thing we do in the end of the game day, which you can see on the order of play, is we're going to rest. And it says right here, the same things here. Rest. Eat. Rest and eat. Discard one food marker from Bjor's tray. Bjor gains one health. Move his health back marker back up. Uh, he doesn't lose any health uh, or any health as his terror is already zero. So we're okay there. So he's going to consume a food. And his health marker goes back up. Yay, Bior, you're awesome. You're healthy again. That's good. Okay, so we did that. And it says restore Bior's, Bior's energy to full. Well, I'll just move that up to six. You don't need to see me do that. You know I'm putting his energy back up to six. Okay. Uh, you don't have any experience points, so you can't advance your character. You also don't have any upgrade cards to modify your deck with. So we're not going to do any of that, which is all part of this end-of-day stuff that you'd fall in order. Okay, so it's restore full energy. If you're exhausted, restore four points instead of instead. Meaning if you exhaust yourself, you don't get your full energy back. You're still tired the next day. If you're And it says advance your character by spending experience points. That's why it's saying we don't do that. Modify your deck. We don't do that. If you're in a location with a dream icon, read the dream. Well, we are. I believe. Uh, yeah, it does. That's all it has. Okay. If you are going insane, read the nightmare instead. Start the next day. Well, we're not going insane. But um, let's see. You're in a location with a, sim a dream symbol. So in a normal game, you would now open the exploration journal of this location and look for the dream. In the tutorial, read the dream from the tutorial um, from the tutorial journal instead. Remember to look at the correct section of the tutorial journal 102 Hunter's Grove dreams contain both story text and rules remember to apply this dream this dreams rules lose one energy okay after you read the dream your day your day 2 begins so let's go read the dream here we are at Hunter's Grove and by the way it says as Hunter's Grove it says as you walk in the shadow of the Hunter's Grove your heart beats faster and your wound burns you died not far from here 2 weeks ago Though it took some time for you to realize that, you try hard not to think about those events. Hmm. Humming your favorite tune, you chase away the memories. You died two weeks ago? That's not good. That's pretty bad. But we're going to have a dream. So we went to sleep in, in, uh, in the Hunter's Grove. In your dream, you return to the dark ravine, deep in the grove. Like many others, you search for a little girl who went missing in Kunok. Instead, you find a mass of what looks like tangled black snakes crawling across the moss-covered stone. The mass rises on its countless black legs and rushes at you. For a split second, you see the horrific truth. What charges as a malformed, overgrown, beating heart on countless legs of blackened vines, veins, and arteries. 
It opens its circular maw full of lamprey-like teeth. That's pretty nasty. Next moment, it's on top of you, ripping into your side and, and trying desperately to push itself into your chest. With all your strength, you pull it away from the wound, throw it to the ground, hold it in place with your boot, and crush it with a swing of, from your hammer. Then you wake up alone in the forest, shivering. The wound burns again. You ask the village priestess and herbalist. You asked the village priestess and herbalist. You tried many remedies and quaffed foul-smelling mixtures. Still, the wound festers, turning black. You try to fall asleep, but your mind dwells on what fate awaits you, and whether a thing like that, one that killed you, will emerge from your chest once you die. Lose one energy and gain one health. Okay, we already did that. The prophetic dream caused Bior to lose one point of energy and gain one point of health. Move the markers accordingly. After reading dreams or a nightmare, continue the game. In this case, go to part eight, start of the second day. Okay. So our terrible nightmare caused us to have a little sleeplessness and we lost an energy. That's okay. We can survive that. But now we're going on to our second day. And I think that's where we're going to stop this video for today. Um, we'll, we'll could pick it up with us heading, Bior heading into a second day as he uh, ventures forth from the Hunter's Grove to the Whitening. Uh, I believe that's where we'll be heading next, if I'm not mistaken, by the tutorial. And then we'll see what happens there. So, guys, uh, yeah, we're running through this. It's pretty cool. And then I, I, I am going to play this game on the channel. Just waiting to see something first. So, uh, we are playing it now, of course, but I mean the full game. So, I hope you're enjoying the tutorial. And uh, thank you for watching. Thanks, as always. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. It's meaningful to me. And uh, I appreciate you all taking the time to watch, comment, uh, uh, let me know how things are going, and all that good stuff, and any rules goofs that I had. I don't think I had any here because I'm following a scripted event. But anyway, you get the idea. So I'll talk to you soon, and I'll see you in the next episode of F Tainted Grail, The Fall of Avalon. We're going to be playing part two, day two, of the tutorial. Take care.